And last but not least, let's move over to the roots here. Now, same as before with the roots, I'm just going to want to shift some of the locations around with those. So I'll just weld this in here. Pardon me, I lost my weld tool there. Weld. And crank it up. And then take a look at the concept. And I think that this root actually comes out a little bit more towards the front of the tree. So I'll give that extrusion point some space. Because so that's probably the largest of the roots. And then turn off edge constraints. Just reposition a couple of these vertices to make the flow look a little nicer. And then I'm going to make a planar, these polygons, just to give them a sort of nice shape. So I'll inset it first. Not too much, just a little bit. In screen space, I'll pull it out a little bit. And then I'll make a planar. And now I'm just going to go ahead and draw my spline out. Once again, I'm not going to try too much to mess around with the freeform spline tool. I'll give it one shot. If it doesn't want to work, which it doesn't appear to be at the moment. Then I'll just go over and use my old fashioned line tool. The main thing is that we're aware of the freeform spline tool. We can see how it works. And we can use it later, mess around with it, and try to create some really cool stuff using it. So there I've created my line. I'm just going to move it into position. And edit some of its vertices to get the most optimal result. Maybe I'm going to want to do this with soft selection. Turn soft selection back on. And I actually sort of like the way that's going already. So I think I'll stick with that. Just try to make sure it's still matched up with the concept somewhat. And it is. So I'm going to go ahead and extrude this, extrude on spline, so pick my line, and just try to get see through here to try to adjust my taper and my taper curve. I did that backwards. I want to adjust my taper first and then my taper curve. And then let's just see how the topology is going. Probably going to want to add a couple more segments. That looks okay. I can actually delete the base because it's in the ground. And then I'm going to use P Connect um, to pull out some of this unnecessary topology. So Again, shift control and just pull out some of these extra loops. Any of the stuff that's making it a little bit heavy, we'll just pull it out. And then I could actually go ahead and really optimize this later. If I had a little bit more time in the tutorial, I would show you how to do that. But using these tools, you can actually quite easily go ahead and uh, optimize. For some reason it's not giving me a ring selection option here. Oh, key connect. Try that one more time. And in screen space, I'm just going to shift drag this last edge out. 
so I can stick it into the ground, close it off. Uh, as I was saying, though, I can actually use a lot of these tools later on to really optimize some of this geometry down for an in-game sort of thing. Don't really have time to do it right now for the tutorial. But you can see how how these tools could actually be really, really efficient for that sort of thing. Uh, these last two routes, I think, are okay where they are. So I'm just going to... I don't know, what the heck. Actually, I'll, I'll move one of them over. I'll probably move this one right here over. So, well, get rid of that one. And where's a good place to move this guy? Probably right here. So I'll just chamfer this thing out. And target weld. Space these two vertices using edge constraints to make sure that they slide along the existing edge. And then connect. Actually, connect the other way. Because I think that silhouette is more important. So connect once more. I've got my extrusion surface. So now I'll just go back into my front view. Quickly draw a line out. Back to my line tools. And this one's actually a very, very simple line. So it doesn't require too many points. That should be just about enough. Now I'm just going to want to make sure that it's properly aligned with my extrusion surface. I'm just going to rotate this thing in screen space. Try to make it as perpendicular as possible. Go to local. See if that helps. And that should help a little bit. And now I'm going to reposition some of my points around ever so slightly. look at them from a few different angles to see how these points are really looking in 3D space. I think that's good good enough for me. So go back and select my extrusion surface, polygons, shoot on spline, pick my spline, and I can really crank the number of uh, segments down this time because it's a very short route. And I'll just go with the default in terms of the taper. And actually for this last one, I'm just going to use a good old-fashioned extrude. Because it's a really, really small root. So I'll just extrude it right out. Turn off edge constraints. Yank it down. Rotate it. Scale it in. And then I'm just going to use a couple quick swift loops and reposition them a little bit just to get a, a little more interesting shape to that final root. Scale it inwards a little bit too. Go to loop mode, select the entire loop. Scale it in. And then using soft selection. I'll just turn soft selection on and lower the amount of fall off. And just move this over ever so slightly. So I think I'm pretty happy with all my branches overall. 
I'll save it one more time. Take a look at all my branches. Once again, I'm going to need to select and smooth all because I've lost some of my smoothing here. Um, where is it? There it is. Smooth all. And actually, even without any subdivision on it, it's already starting to look kind of cool. I can uh, probably go in and move a few of these branches around. Maybe make them look a little bit better. Turn on norms. Lower my iterations down, because I don't think I need two in this instance. And yeah, it's looking pretty good overall. So all that I have left to do now is position a few of these branches a little bit better. And there's a few things that I'd like to use just to demo that. And then I can add a couple little secondary branches and the final leaves. So really quickly now, I'm just going to make the selection, not the entire selection. I'm going to use soft selection. And I'm going to crank up my fall off just enough that it doesn't start to catch any of the other branches. It might, might catch the tip of that one branch, but that should be okay. Maybe if I select a different portion. Yeah, there we go. So now it's going to actually affect it more from the center. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a bend modifier. You can actually use a bend modifier on sub-elements, not just on the entire object. So if I use a bend modifier, what I'm going to want to do is I'm first going to want to adjust the center. I'm going to want to get the center to be where I want the center of the bend to occur. And in this case, I think I want it to occur from the base of my selection on the branch. Then what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to mess with the direction a little bit. Usually I find going to 90 or negative 90 works. And then I'm going to have to crank up my ankle and see which direction I want to bend on. So I could bend it here on the z-axis. That's doing something kind of cool. Y is a little crazy. Or I could bend it on the uh, x-axis. But if I crank it up too much, that's going to be a little bit too too high. So let's see if I if moving the center around helps that effect out a little bit. Not too much. So I'll put the center back where it was. But now what I'm going to try to do is I'm actually going to try to slide the gizmo around. By sliding the gizmo around too, you can create some really sort of cool and neat effects just by moving it around and playing with it. Um, but I'm not really liking that. So I'm going to go back to Z. And see what kind of a, an effect I can get with it on the Z axis. Just rotating around in 3D space. It's kind of cool but not exactly what I want. I think it might have to do with the soft selection. I'm going to turn the soft selection off. And actually, I'm going to try to make a hard selection, an exact selection. And I'll move back up to my bend modifier and see if I can get a little bit better results. So once again, I'm going to move the center. I'm going to try to position it right at the point where I want the bend to begin. Now I'm going to try going back over to the x-axis now. And yes, I'm starting to get a much cooler result here now by putting it on the x-axis. So I can bend it to a negative or a positive. For this branch, I think I want to go with a negative. I think I like the way that looks. I'm fairly happy with that. The last thing I'm going to do is just slide the gizmo around. And see if I can get slightly different results from it. But not too much. So I'm just going to put it back to where it was. And say, OK, collapse it. So I go back and convert to poly. 
So now that I have moved that over ever so slightly, I can actually go in and use my soft selection now to try to manually reposition things into a slightly more interesting sort of shape just by adjusting my fall off here and there, moving things back around, and making various different selections. Spinning around it and just you know looking at looking at what it's really doing in 3D space. And you know, this is a tree and it's organic and I could spend probably all day, you know, tweaking it here and there, usually to do a really high end tree. Uh, at least in production environment, from my experience, it takes three to four days to do the high poly, low poly baking and texturing and everything else. So to spend, you know, a day or two doing your really good high poly is not unheard of. Unfortunately, I only have an hour to an hour and a half to do this, so I, I can't spend forever messing around with it. Just demo a few different techniques, try to make it look as cool as possible in the time that I have. So I'm just going to move this branch around a little bit, try to get it doing something kind of interesting in, in 3D space rather than just hanging straight down. And I don't mind if it moves a couple of my other branches ever so slightly, because once again, this is organic. And that's fine by me. So, I think I'm happy with where my branches are. Now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and bend the entire upper portion of the tree. For some reason I seem to have lost my selection. I think that's because of the subsisting edge here. So I'll try that one more time and I'll save it first. So I'll go back to vertex selection. In this case I think probably soft selection might help me out a little bit better. Up my fall off a little bit. And then I'm actually going to apply a bend modifier to the entire upper portion of the tree. I'll go with a 90 direction to start. Just see what that does for me. And try to see which axis is going to be the best axis for my bend. See if I can't maybe rotate my gizmo. Try to bend it on a slightly different axis. And I think I'm happy with that. That looks kind of cool. Now the whole tree is sort of bending in 3D space. It's starting to look really cool. So I'll collapse my bend modifier. We're almost there. All I've got to do now is just add a few finishing touches, some secondary branches, and add my leaves. Save it one more time. So right now, I already have a little bit of topology that I've added in here for this secondary branch. I'll just shift it into position. And actually I'm going to want to give it a little bit more space. So I'll slide this loop over a little bit. And I think it's time to chamfer. Okay. Target weld. And we'll see how this works out. Now, I think that probably the hot fix for this branch tool was uh, that technique I came up with earlier, where I kind of prepare the space 
the extrusion space a little bit ahead of time. Just, you know, scaling it out a little bit, giving it some more room to grow. And also, I think that inset technique and then the make a planar really helped because I think that probably this tool could get very confused by a polygon that folds in half like this. So probably if I go ahead and try to make a planar out of this, the branch tool will really like me for that. And I'm sure that this is going to make things a lot easier for me. So I'm going to switch back to my branch tool now. And somehow it just tried to make something disappear there, which is very odd. Okay, it's behaving funny too. Sometimes I find that the more you use these tools as well in a file, it starts to get a little bit more and a little bit more wonky. And I've used the tool quite a lot in this demo. So probably to fix that, in the past, I would export this as an OBJ and re-import it into a new scene. And that generally, most of the time, fixes all the bugs that sort of build up with time. Uh, once again, I don't really have time to do that. So I'm just going to use the old-fashioned line tool here. Really quick and easy. And since this is just a secondary branch and uh, not really a big or important looking branch, then that should be totally fine. Just nudge it over here. Try to get it perpendicular. That looks good. And actually, I'll see if I can't maybe draw all of my lines for my secondary branches right now. Let's get it out of the way. Draw one more here. This one's going to need to be positioned rather dramatically in 3D space. Just get it lined up there. Okay, that looks good. On to the next one. Try and do a time saver here. And I don't believe there's too many more. At least I won't try to add too many more. I'll add one more here. And I think the last ones that I'm going to do will be on the route here. And that should do it. At least that should make for a little bit more interesting of a shape. Let's try to get that lined up with some sort of a corresponding vertex that I can chamfer from later. Okay, looks good. Just gonna position that last vert there. Try to get it down into the ground. Okay. So now, if all goes as planned, I should be able to do these extrusions almost one after another. So let's try some, oh, turn off the branch tool. Polygons, shoot on spline, fix spline. And it seems to be liking me right now. So I like that. I'm glad that it likes me. 
and doesn't want to give me a hard time. So secondary branch number one. We'll just add one more loop in here. Try to match it up. Uh, swiftly, chamfer, and I'm going to turn ignore back facing on to all these words here because the target weld won't work because they're too close together. I'll just apply that. And I'm just going to need to position this uh, vertex of the spline a little bit better. It doesn't quite line up. Try to get it to go a little bit more perpendicular here. And that should be fine. So, I'm going to select our polygon. Do that spline, pick spline, hey, and this one likes me too. Just to adjust the taper amount, collapse the end, and look at that, we're going pretty fast now, we're flying. Now, I believe I only had one more or two more secondary branches here. Just trying to make some space for this one. Chamfer. And then still have another back facing on, which is good. I'm going to need to marquee select and weld these vertices. And then just once again try to adjust couple of the points on the spline. And that, I think, will work for me. Maybe just try to get it a little bit more curvy there. That looks good. Select the branch. Select the polygon. Extrude on spline. Pick spline. And voila, I think I can crank the curves down a little bit, or the uh, segments down. Left end. One more. The root. This one looks pretty straightforward. There's a spot for it already. So I should easily be able to chamfer it out. And target weld. Move these words over. And shoot on spline. Choose a spline. Definitely bring the segments down on this one. But up the taper curve and collapse the end. Voila! I feel like we're pretty much done here. Well, there's only one thing I have left to do. And that's, if you'll notice, um, there are some little spikes sticking out on a few of the branches, actually on a lot of them. So I'm just going to go around and really, really quickly add in those spikes. Um, there's a really nice little tool. I, I can't think of a ton of applications for it, but it is a pretty cool little tool, at least in this instance. So I'm just going to go around and I'm going to randomly select uh, a few vertices around each of the branches. I'm not going to try to be all that specific with my selections. Just try to randomly go around and grab a few vertices. 
make sure I'm grabbing them from all the different sides so that it doesn't start to look like they're all coming from the same spot or anything like that. And it seems to be going okay. Bear with me while I make my selections here. Because I'm going to add the spikes in one kind of quick maneuver. Um, which in the end will end up saving a lot of time. Initially with the selections and stuff, it kind of adds a bit more time to things. But definitely in the end, it should be a pretty big time saver. Select a few more here. On this larger branch, we will definitely need it. And I'm not too sure. I don't think I've missed any of the branches here. I think I've pretty much selected a few verts on, on every single one of the branches. I think so. And not on the roofs. The roofs don't have the same properties. So they don't need the selection. So the last thing I'm going to do, to make sure I save it first, is uh, this could take things out a little bit. The last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit Extrude. And first of all, the extrusion height is rather high, but more than that, the base of the extrusion is, is pretty large. But as you can see, by extruding on a vertex, that created these cool little spike shapes everywhere that I selected those vertices. So I think I'm just going to change the height a little bit more, because that's a little too high. And then uh, I'm going to look around and see if I need to deselect any of them. I think I may have gone a little bit overboard in a couple of the spots. So I'm just going to deselect a few of the ports to try not to have too many of these spikes sticking out everywhere. And I think that pretty much looks okay. So I'm going to say okay. Last thing we're going to do is in screen space, I'm just going to adjust a few of them. Make some of them a little bit longer. Make some of them a little bit shorter. Kind of change the angles. And so on and so forth. And do a final little tweak um, not all of them, but a good majority of them. Just try to get a little bit more of that variety so they don't all look the same. And uh, I can, once again, get a slightly more natural feel to everything. Also, I think that maybe, yeah, I'm going to get some weird topology uh, in a few of the smaller areas where there wasn't enough room for the spikes to, to grow the base of the chamfer. So in those areas I'm going to have to go back in and I'm just going to have to go in and weld everything. But I don't think I have time to do that during the tutorial, so probably I'll go back and clean some of that stuff up after I've completed the tutorial. And I think I think we are just about finished. At least we ought to be. Okay, so now the last thing I'm going to do is actually I kind of like how things look with the gray material applied to them. So I'm going to apply my gray material. And I'm going to turn on NERMS 
and I'm going to hide my concept so that we can see the final result, which is a really cool sort of gnarly looking twisted tree using 99.9% .9 graphite modeling tools. And here we have our final result. All I've done extra is I've just created a leaf shape, one single leaf mesh, and then imported that in and scaled it up and scaled it down to different sizes and then copied it and pasted it all over the various different portions of my model to give it some nice realistic yet stylized looking foliage coverage. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. This has been Caleb Ellsworth for CG Tuts. Thanks for watching.